Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm once again looking at Stable Diffusion, but this time some rather more advanced things. Yes, okay, so this is one for the nerds. Let's just quickly go over my environment so you know what is going on. It is, of course, Ubuntu 2004. You can feel free to use Microsoft Windows if you like, but some of the commands and your performance may indeed vary. If you want to download and install Ubuntu, it is completely free, and you can do so from that URL. I'm using an NVIDIA GPU with the NVIDIA drivers and CUDA Toolkit 11.7.1 because that is the very latest version. I am also using Anaconda as my virtual Python environment. I have, of course, got stable inf diffusion already installed and ready to go. You can watch the previous video for how to do that. So let's get right into it and we'll go on to the next thing. Now we've already done all the bits here with this text to image with stable diffusion. We've had a look at all that and all the different options. We're now popping on to the image modification with stable diffusion. Yes, yes. All right. Let's just pop that one in there. We'll pop that one in there. We'll start running it while, uh, while this does things. Right. Okay. There we go. So here it is. Image modification with stable diffusion by using diffusion denoising mechanism, as first proposed by SD Edit. The model can be used for different tasks such as text guided image to image translation and upscaling, similar to the text to image sampling script. We provide a script to perform image modification with stable diffusion. So there we go. We've got an input there and there, uh, but it turns that basic input into a rather more fancy output. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of plain colors, but also a little bit of noise in there as well. And that's that's basically the kind of image that works best. So I'll show you the one that I've that I've just created. And that was basically girl with a pearl earring. So that's that's the input there. So scripts, input image, girl with a pearl earring. Yeah, but the prompt I've used is a pretty Indian girl with an emerald earring and a psychedelic headscarf. Yeah. OK. All right. So how did that do? Stable diffusion. Let's have a look at the outputs. We've got the image to image samples there. And then we've got the grid we've just created. So there we go. There we go. There she is, the original. And there is the Indian girl with a psychedelic headscarf and an emerald earring. So, yeah, there you go. You, you can actually turn any image into pretty much any other image you want. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So let's have a look at a few more of those. Now, I have, of course, done a few of these already. And uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to start off with a badly drawn castle. And uh, I've got the uh, the batch script there that I use to create these. So let's just quickly go through and we'll show you on the outputs here. Image to image samples. There we go. There we go. Right. Now, this is uh, this is the script I used and it's basically calling this lots of times. So the prompt and the init image are the only two things that I bother to pass in. Uh, I create a random number because I'm like that. Uh, there's a strength variable there that can go from naught to one. If you set it to naught, then the image won't change at all. If you set it to one, then the image will completely change. Um, so yeah, about three quarters power is good. So somewhere between 0 0.75 and 0 0.95 is, is usually quite good. Uh, but yes, the, the lower that number, the more like the original image it will stay. The scale I've put up quite a bit so it more closely matches my prompt. I've also got a fixed output directory and as mentioned, the uh, the random seed I, I generate myself there. A uh, number of samples, one just so I can create ever so slightly bigger images. Uh, and I'm creating eight different varieties of that image each time using 100 D dim steps. All right. OK, so let's see what this thing created. So there we go. We've got a badly drawn castle. That's that top one up there. Yeah. So if you want to uh, want to follow along at the text at the top, by all means, you can. So there's the badly drawn castle. And as you can see, that's an, an ancient, intricate, detailed, complex, fine art stone castle with many arrow slits and things. Yeah. 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 OK, let's just make a V typo there, but never mind. And um, yeah, as you can see, it does greatly improve the castle. Yeah. Yeah. So it keeps much of the same thing. So we've got this green grass and these little mountains in the background and, and those become clouds and those all become windows. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the the quality of my drawing goes up somewhat in just a few seconds, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Mm, yeah, and there's a kitten. So I've got a badly drawn cat there, which I then turn into a high resolution, accurate, realistic photograph of a really cute kitten. Yeah, as you can see, it's still got the brown fur and the little pinky ears and all that sort of stuff. It's slightly green eyes, little pinky nose. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty cool, isn't it? And this one you, you may recognize from the thumbnail. So here we've got a badly drawn face 
which is actually a stunning portrait, uh, a portrait of a gorgeous sorceress with flowing red hair and a shining golden necklace in a fantasy RPG avatar art style portrait. So yeah, yeah, there we go. That one's rather cool, isn't it? Whoops, wrong button. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, we've got the hair going all over the place. We've got these blue things. We've got some green stuff down the bottom. So it, you know, it, it, it takes your original image and um, yes, it improves on it somewhat. Improves on it somewhat. <laughs> uh, so here I've got uh, a woman with leaves instead of hair. And this is a full colour painting, which is a, a true masterpiece, of course. And uh, as you can see, the uh, the quality, you know, sometimes it will give the skin the actual colour. And it sort of looks like paper. So I, I thought I'd give it some RGB noise just to see what it did. And uh, it sort of turns that into paper, which is quite good. So there we go. We've got some rather cool women with uh, leaves instead of hair and here we've got uh, a 3d render of a red brick house with an ancient haunted oak tree and stuff there that's uh, rendered in unreal engine of course <clears throat> not and uh, yeah uh, yeah there we go i mean it's, it's got some perspective and all sorts of stuff going on there it looks uh yeah very much better than my original drawing don't you think yeah <laughs> there's my badly drawn rodent which is actually a cute rodent's face acrylic on canvas yeah yeah that's uh that's quite some freaky eyes we've got going on there. That's some very freaky eyes. So this is why, generally speaking, I uh, I do eight or more uh, images per per thing because sometimes they come out a little bit weird. Like you might have three ears or, or yeah, a, a, an extra foot, <laughs> things like that, things like that. But well, I'll, I'll show you in a minute how you can fix some of the weirdness, some of the weirdness. Sometimes you may get an extra bit on it or a watermark or something like that. Like, you know, you may not want that trombone quite as big as that. But yeah, we'll, we'll show you that in a second. And um, oh, yes. Now, this this is uh, this is quite an interesting one. So that's that's that picture. Yeah. Now, as you can see, that changes it quite a lot, doesn't it? That changes it quite a lot doesn't doesn't really follow the original one that's uh yeah if you've got too detailed a painting or it's too noisy or I, I don't know it's strange very strange isn't it anyway so there's a girl with a pearl earring yeah that one does more closely watch it In, instead she's got uh, demonic eyes and a diamond earring so that's that's pretty good that's pretty good I do like some of those look at that that's quite good isn't it yeah yeah so it follows it follows it that's you know it's turned that into hair instead Got some some great earrings there. We've got a man there with a, a giant bowler hat instead. Yeah, that's quite strange, but all right, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, some of those look quite good. That hat looks exceptionally strange. I'd actually quite like a hat like that. But um, yeah, it, it it improves. It improves my original. Uh, here we've got uh, a portrait painting of a very old woman with luscious red lips and long, beautiful blonde hair and a wild smile. That's pretty much exactly on, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. So it still follows that. You still got the white shirt here and the blonde bit here and the little black bit there. And yeah, but it's, you know, sort of turned it into a, more a photograph than, than anything else. So, yeah. And of course, that's, a, you know, study of a young woman. So I thought I'd make her old. Why not? Hey, why not? Because you, you can turn any image into any other image. Uh, so there we've got some trees there that I'm making into a, sp a spooky haunted forest at night with mist descending on the ancient decaying rotten road. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that uh, it's, it's added the mist. It's still got the road in the middle, but the trees change and they become more spooky. See that the tree, those have got leaves on, no leaves on there. They look very spooky and, and weird, but it's still following the same basic form of the uh, of the initial image, which is pretty cool, I thought, which is pretty cool. And there's the painter. So it's a, a public domain image from the, uh, the Smithsonian. So here's a, a high resolution portrait of a handsome gentleman with a paintbrush. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at a few of those. So yeah, again, it's turned them into a, a photograph, which is yeah, they are all very high quality. We've got we've got a lot of the paint. You see that it's taken as the paint in the background, which is still pretty good. And he's got a couple of paint brushes there, and uh, yeah, so it's 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 done very well. I think done very well indeed. There's my badly drawn sports car, a stunning detailed uh, painting of a polished shiny red sports car, <laughs> and uh, yeah. As you can see there, it's taken those bits, turned them into clouds. It's put put the grass into far more realistic grass. This very plain road, it's turned into a nice one. And uh, yeah, yeah. As you can see though, as mentioned, good to do lots of images as sometimes it does these uh, these weird things. Um, it's always best to have at least one side to be 512. So this one is, is a little bit bigger. That's 896 by 576. So yeah, if, if you can keep one side 512, that, that 
they tend to turn out best but you can make them a little bit bigger you can make them a little bit bigger but there look at it's put the spokes on the wheels almost perfectly and added this really weird funky bit on the top so yeah yeah i quite like all of those there we go there we go so there's some examples of how to draw things really badly or take some very well drawn original pictures uh, and turn them into uh, completely different things yeah yeah all right so that's advanced thing number one all right so advanced thing number two is image in painting yeah okay so this is ideal for removing those watermarks or the extra weird bits so they were here's here's one i made earlier here's one i made earlier now this is this is quite easy again basically you just need to have the image and then create a mask for it so all i did here was popped open gimp drop the drop the image in there and then i said all right okay um white is the bit that you, that you want to change black you don't want you, you want to keep the same so i thought all right i'll do a white bit over there do a white bit over there do a white bit over there then you save that as a mask yeah just discard those changes so that's called 00055 so i call that one 00055 underscore mask yeah and they have to be pngs can't use jpegs for the in painting and there i've got the little white bits so i'll get rid of that get rid of that yeah I'll turn it into an actual picture let's just uh whoops let's pop that open again uh where are we Enable diffusion and uh, so we've got the in painting one and this i've already gone through of course in the video already let's just run this while i'm doing bits and pieces there we go pop that in there <clears throat> right so this is off the original latent diffusion yeah yeah already already seen the video for this already done a video on the in painting so if you want to download the model you go to the original comp viz latent diffusion yeah so this latent diffusion scroll down to the in painting and there is the w get that you can run to get that last dot checkpoint and an example of the command that you can run the one that i've just run there as well now of course if you've been following my videos and you've already got latent diffusion downloaded and you've already downloaded that in painting checkpoint then you can of course just link it like i have done there so ln minus s got my previous latent diffusion in painting last checkpoint and i'm just linking in here into the stable diffusion one the models ldm in painting big last dot checkpoint yeah yeah okay so basically you just need to download that then you can run the in paint in the scripts directory and then let's have a look at that so you get outputs They've got in painting results, and there it is. We'll just open the uh, the previous one as well. Input in painting. So there's the original one. So there's the original one with the sort of mess and the little thing on the thing there, and there, and there's there's without the thing and without the thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's 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 how you can sort of fix up your images a little bit if you get some bits and pieces on there that you don't necessarily want. You can uh, you can paint them out slightly. You can paint them out. All right. Okay. So that's that's nerdy thing number two. Let's move on to the next one. So, what if you have a really really low powered card? Yeah, yeah. So, say you've only got something like four gig of VRAM, and you you still want to be able to run this, or maybe you don't like typing things on the command line because you don't like scripting. You you prefer a a web interface, and you can run all that sort of stuff. Or you know maybe you haven't got a GPU capable of running this at all and you you want to spend hours running it on your CPU well we've got you covered there as well or at least uh this this guy has here yeah uh Basa Jindal yeah so this this is a fork there are as you can see rather a lot of forks <laughs> 1 1.1 thousand forks but this fork has lots of different things you can see here so it's optimized stable diffusion it's it's not optimized for speed it's optimized for lower VRAM usage yeah so this is this is much much slower than the standard stable diffusion but it uses less vram so if you've got a low vram card here as it says you can generate a 512 by 512 image from a prior image and a prompt on a 4 gig vram gpu in under 20 seconds now there's two sets of scripts here one is for gradio which is the web interface and one is the standard cli so if you want to use gradio yeah you will of course have to yeah you guessed it pip install gradio yeah that's all you have to do then, then you've got gradio installed now because this is a different uh directory as well i've put it into a, a completely different one um i did also have to link the uh stable diffusion checkpoints into this repo as well so i've got the uh version one model there and i did also have to pip install minus e dot so that i got the optimized sd directory so it knew where that was and what to do with that yeah 
Yeah, okay. So that basically this version slower, but runs in a web interface. That's that's one option. You can run it in CLI as well, so you can still do scripting and with four gig of VRAM. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So should we have a look at this? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's have a look at this. So we'll do the uh, the Gradio version, the web one of text to image. Let's paste that in. And uh, up here, you will be able to see that it will be using a lot less VRAM than the original one, which uh, can use up to 22 gig, depending on what you're doing. <laughs> right, so this takes a few seconds to start, and then it will give you a little link that you can click on, da, 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 and that will open up in your web browser. So there you go. Okay, so let's open up that link. And, and there it is. There's the web interface. Yeah, so we've got your prompt up here. So we'll type, uh, you know, a photograph of a cyberpunk pet rodent using a computer from the future. Yeah? How about that? Yeah, assuming I can actually spell future. Okay, so again, you've got sliders, yeah? Much like the uh, the dream diffusion, so all right, let's do uh, let's do fifty four because why not? Number of iterations if you want to do loads of images, batch size, yeah. If you want to fit loads of images in, height and width. The, this this goes up to four hundred nine six, so I I could probably do that. Haven't tried it, but uh, yeah, height, width, scale. As mentioned before, how close it matches your prompt. Uh, the D D D M E T A device, so you can put CPU in there as well. Seed by default is completely random. Uh, and the out uh, there, you got text to image samples. And uh, yeah, so that it, it saves them, but you can also see them up here. So let's press submit on that. And that will that will start doing things. And as you can see back here, it's using the PLMS sampler. So you can't actually change uh, to DDIM or anything like that. So it is it is a slightly limited GUI, but um, you know, it, it's got uh, it's got the, it's got the things there. So if you don't like typing, very much and you prefer sliders and all that sort of stuff then there you go and uh, if we if we see up here it is using slightly over four gig but then i have got obs studio and all sorts of other things running at the moment as well <laughs> lots and lots of tabs but uh, yeah very much less vram usage there uh, 4878 so it's uh, yeah yeah as you can see it, it is of course very much slower um but uh, but yeah yeah that that may be what you want because you haven't got very much vram so there you go Look at that. There you go. You've got, you got your cyberpunk rodent. Yeah? Yeah. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That is pretty cool. Now, there are also some other things on this one as well. It's also got weighted prompts. So if you want to do weighted prompts via the CLI, then you can do that there. For example, minus minus prompt, you can do tabby cat and then a colon 0.25 and a white duck 0.75. Type that into hybrid. So you've got a tabby cat and a white duck hybrid. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. So this one is being updated you know, fairly, fairly frequently. That, that was updated three hours ago, as you can see. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you may want to keep an eye on that. But um, yeah, that's 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 another advanced thing for you. So if you want to use it much lower VRAM, you can probably make much bigger pictures with that as well, because it is using lower VRAM, but it is, of course, a lot slower on the downside. Then there you go. That That is the one for you. Of course, these links are all down in the description. Now, what about if you want to go big? What about if you want to go big? Go big? We like go big, don't we? Lots of people like go big. If you're used to go big and disco, disco diffusion or prog rock diffusion like you've got there, it's all right. We've got we've got text to image HD, which uses go big as well. Yeah. So we've got this applied to stable diffusion. We've got real ESR GAN, which is doing the upscaler. Now, this isn't your standard ESR GAN. This is the um, portable version. Yeah. So you want to download the portable version. Uh, from, from this one, let's, let's just find out where this is, port, uh, ball, you'll find it on here somewhere, there'll be some links, okay, so yeah, you've got the portable executable files, yeah, which you can download for Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, I of course have downloaded the Linux ones, that's a zip file, so you'll have to unzip it as well, basically what I did here was, okay, so I cloned this, this repo here, that gives you that script, whoops, this repo here that gives you that script, the text to image HD, yeah, which I then linked into the standard stable diffusion script directory. Downloaded that real ESR GAN uh, portable executable, unzipped it, yeah. So you got the unzip, 
got rid of the zip file because I don't need that anymore. And then I made real ESR again in CNN Vulkan executable. And then you can run scripts like this. Let's let's just run this one. Copy. And we'll pop this into the... Uh, this is the uh, the HD one. Yeah. No. Pop back here. There we go. Stable diffusion standard. Paste. Stand. There we go. There we go. So stable diffusion. Scripts. So there I've got the texture image HD sim link in there and that'll give me some outputs in here in just a second so i will of course in true nerdy rodent style uh mod modify time slightly brb all righty so there we've got the text to image hd sample pop into here there we've got the sample that's the standard sample at 512 we we'll just make this a little bit bigger because this is massively upscaled <laughs> There we got the uh, the cyberpunk cat, got the uh, upscale version, then we got the final version there. So there you go. That's the uh, text to image HD for stable diffusion. So that's how you can get really high quality, very high resolution images using upscaling and go big. So it basically resamples it all and makes it very, very funky indeed. So there you go. There you go. Is that enough advanced stuff for you? Do you want adv more advanced stuff? Do let me know down in the description if you want to see any other funky stuff. But for now, that is me, Rodan's out.